Today on Junkyard Digs, Kevin's gonna fart a lot. Let's begin. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today we're back with a 73 Ford Bronco. We've spent the last two episodes making run and drive here in the storage unit that it's been sitting in for the last 10 years. Today our goal is to wrap up the remaining loose ends and then hit some desert trails out here in Phoenix, Arizona. Let's get to it. <laughs> the transmission level is still low from the last episode, so we're going to top it off and we're going to use some of what we call weenie slickum to do it. This Hello. is Lucas Oil's stop slip. This stuff is actually magic in a bottle. If we have a transmission that's old or slippy or sticky, or even a manual transmission that uh, crunches between gears, you throw some of this in there and life is better. I need to borrow this. Hey! Right. <laughs> this gas looks absolutely horrible, but it's fresh. We just put it in like, you know, an hour ago. But I think what happened was the uh, the old gas became dehydrated and just turned into powderized poops. So and when we rehydrated it with new gas, we just had a nice fresh poop. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't see. I'm not tall enough. Here you go, Trug. Have some goop. Come here often. You're in my workspace and I don't like it. <laughs> Smelly. That's not me, that's the gas. No, it's. I'm 100% confident it's you. <laughs> Had to call the beatos. Okay, you're about to hit me in the face with your head. And it's a big head. Big head, little brain. Oh, failure. Honestly, looking at what I just dumped out of this, I would not at all be surprised if our issues are the fuel. It is disgusting. But I don't know what to do about that, because it's just the whole tank. I mean, we just put five gallons in when there was nothing in it before. It burns seemingly fine. Knowing what was in that tank and what's been pumped through to this carburetor before we ever got here, I bet that thing was just so full of poop that even though we cleaned it out, we probably still missed a bit or it's not flowing quite right in the idle circuit. So I'm going to go through it again. We should get her this time. Okay, we got our carb apart. And this is exactly how bad that gas is. You can't even tell that Mook just cleaned this carb. Like, it looks like a carb that needs to be rebuilt. Everything is sticky and gross and like that that rod is stuck in there again already after a fresh rebuild. So I'm going to go through this again. I could put another filter in line but I don't think it's going to do anything because it's the actual fuel itself that's causing this, not particulate in the fuel. The fuel itself has become this like sticky tar. So. We'll clean this out and see if I can get those idle circuits a little cleaner and see what happens. Also, this is exactly the reason I did not want to put that brand new Holly 2 barrel I brought along on because this is what it would look like right now. What's that? You need a one half inch Tang Tools wrench from our seven drawer Tang Tools roller cabinet, which if you're interested in, you can check out at tangtoolsusa.com. I guess. There you go. I'm not going to call it that though. As you saw, the car was really nasty. I was able to go through the idle circuit and get a couple things unplugged. Uh, we'll see if that helps. Go and tighten it down. I've done it like three times now. <laughs> the fuel line. Oh, yeah, I can. Do yeah, you have a please, please do. I so thought it's you not asked that exciting. me to push the fuel line down so you could tighten it. I thought that you would not be like so smelly and mean today. <laughs> but here we are. Yeah, spinkers. Do you guys have a spinkers at home? <laughs> Just to be clear, Spinkers is the nickname for our cat, whose name is Spooky. <laughs> Kevin did it, not me. Yeah. It came from a Scotty Kilmer meme where he's doing an integration for speakers. And someone like made a meme where he's just holding up a speaker and he goes, Spinker! <laughs> it's got like an N in it for some reason. I thought that shit was hilarious. So then, promptly thereafter, I went to see Mook when she lived in Minnesota. And you had just gotten the cat like a week before. And I'm like, what's up, Spinker? <laughs> and now our cat's name is Spinker. Spinker. All right, carburetor uh, uh, rebuild attempt two is complete. Let's do the thermostat and an oil change. Ew. Oh my gosh, what in the heck? Look 
in there. <laughs> I know. It's like eating away. What do you guys put in antifreeze down here? Acid? Acid. <laughs> it's disgusting. All right, let's get that off. I'm trying to drain a radiator. It's ever so slowly dribbling over here. So, yeah, good times. <gasps> Is it solid? Yeah. Holy shit, does our water pump even work? <laughs> Damn, okay. Um, I might have to do a water pump if I had to guess. We'll see. What is going on with cars down here? Like, look how corroded this is. I don't understand how everything's not rusty, yet all the electronics and stuff are super corroded here. It's absolutely solid. Like, this, I can't even stick my finger down it. This sounds so crunchy. Let's see if I can keep it all in the hose. Oh, yeah. Look at this. That is insane. Damn. Well, I should have guessed we would have had cooling system problems. Seems to be what everyone has problems with down here. I think I know why now. Yep. I don't know what the what was that went flying. Are they also packed? Damn. Damn. Okay, to uh, confirm whether or not our water pump moves anything because of all this rust we found in these, I've disconnected both radiator or heater hoses. Gonna pop this one off and yep, it should start flowing because it has a vent up here. I'm gonna go fire the engine and see how far it throws it. In theory, I think, I've never done this, I think in theory if it starts spraying our water pump works. Otherwise it doesn't, I don't know. the dumbest possible way I could do this but there was so much rust in these holes I needed to make sure this stuff was moving and now I can see this stuff is moving and it blew a lot of the rust out so yeah okay so a little bit of time has passed we've become creative as you saw we took those hoses off and they're totally full of poop so I routed the upper heater hose down into this jug over this catch pan so that we don't spill any coolant if we do we'll clean it up don't worry and then we are dumping liquid into the bottom hose to be pulled through the engine and out that hose in the top right back here. This was our first flush. It's very hot. I think this is straight up what's been in the block all day since the thermostat hasn't opened. That's why when a radiator drained it was green, but this is actually what was going on. Oh, look at that. That was... Pure sediment. I guess if you can't get the block drains out, which was my case because they were stuck in there with paint, this is an alternative. Alright, let's do it again. I just noticed our heater core is also completely oh stuck full of shit. Holy cow. <laughs> Yeah. Cool.
have a garden hose instead of a bucket, but nothing in our lives is ever ideal. The wind revival's out in the middle of nowhere, so blah. Uh, yeah, let's go get another gallon. We're going to keep repeating this until we get clear water coming out. Well, reasonably clear. Until there's no longer poop and rust. Alright, it certainly still needs flush, but I think we're good enough drive it around out here now without it immediately overheating. All right, let's go ahead and change our thermostat. Ugh. That is disgusting. That's supposed to be a hole all the way through and it is one solid inch of poop. And so is this one, like. What is this, is it stop leak? You know, this makes me think of something. The early episodes of Roadkill, you know, the good ones worth watching, they uh, they ran into overheating problems on, like, every trip. And I never understood why, because I have never owned a vehicle that, like, had an overheating problem that wasn't, like, change the thermostat, put a different radiator in, done, flush it, done. It's always an easy fix. But I've also never done a revival in the south or the west coast which is where those guys were all the time is there something going on down here where cooling systems don't last as long or they plug up like this like, let me know down in the comments what the hell is going on in arizona california or whatever where you guys are just killing old cooling systems all of our revivals i've never had a problem with something overheating we've always driven it. it's been just fine heck the golden oldsmobile we drove all the way from kansas would collapse the upper radiator hose whenever you gave it rpm and i didn't even know so we drove it all the way up here and it was like 180, 190. And that was probably the hottest I've ever had a car that was a revival vehicle. So is there just something magical about down here that's really hard on cooling systems? Let us know down in the comments because I'm genuinely curious. We've got some RTV on either side of that gasket to try and help it uh, seal because that is not a pretty surface. I'm going to throw the bolts in there and we're good to go. I have drained the oil. I got the old filter out. I'm in the process of filling the new filter and refilling the engine with oil. O'Reilly's, you need a sponsor. I was just going to say, this <laughs> looks like an O'Reilly sponsorship. <laughs> O'Reilly's, if you're watching this, which you may be, junkcarddigs1 at gmail.com. Let's do some stuff. Okay, so a little bit of tech on oil. This is STP's oil treatment. It has a zinc anti-wear agent, specifically ZDDP. Now, you need to run ZDDP in engines that have a flat tappet camshaft. Back in the day, oil came with ZDDP in it. It had a zinc additive from the oil manufacturer because all cars across the board were flat tappet camshafts. What this stuff does is forms a sacrificial layer on the camshaft and the lifters so that as the friction is there, since they're non-roller, they literally just you know grind against each other all day, that friction eats away this zinc layer on the outside instead of actually eating the metal material of the camshaft. Now there are oils that have it in it still, such as the, I think, the VR1 racing oil. They have zinc in it, but that's like 20 weight 50. And I think Rotella diesel oil still has it in it? I don't remember. I do know though that in one of the episodes of the Satellite series, we actually discussed this really well and read an article online that listed the amounts of zinc in old oil and in this stuff. So you can check that out right up here. I have a question that somebody out there might have. What you got? Will it hurt anything if it's not a flat tappet? No, it will not. Uh, that is a great point. A roller camshaft, you could run this as well. It's not necessary. I mean, these things are four bucks a bottle, so you're just throwing away eight dollars, and it offsets your oil quantity by a quart. So you gotta like kind of balance that out. It's it's kind of annoying, not going to lie, but it is necessary. I suppose you could run it in any engine uh, that's probably non-fuel injected. Those get weird with catalytic converters. All right, we got our Wix 51515 and some O'Reilly's 1040 with STP zinc additive. Let's go throw it in the truck and call it a day and come back tomorrow, wrap everything up, hit the trails. All right, Mook, what do you say we call it a night? Once upon a time. There was an evil carburetor named Quadrajet!
Morning, Moot. Good morning. Do you remember where the heck we left off? We did an oil change, and we flushed out the cooling system. We haven't run this after the oil change, so I'm sure uh, it'll be a lot of lifter noise on, on startup. Uh, I think we need to finish these hoses this morning, and then fill it with water, and then move on to making our carb run a little better, and then head out to the desert. Sweet. I'd like to make a public service announcement here. I was dressed first. <laughs> for the record. <laughs> I just liked your style. So, Kevin is not know. creative at all and just stole my idea. This is my last clean shirt. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday at one point we fired this up to move it a little bit to move some stuff around and we had the camera rolling and it was after we had driven it for the first time so it sat here hot and cooled for two hours. And uh, it acted like it had a dead hole, like one of the cylinders had no compression and then it ran on like half the cylinder. Something was wacky and I'll, I'll include the clip now so you can see it. It's like a valve got stuck or something. <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, it was just not right. It was like I lost half the cylinders and I couldn't figure out why. We went back to the motel last night and I thought about that for a bit and I think we actually stuck some valves for a little bit there. After driving for the first time in well over 10 years and probably seeing all of 210, 220 degrees since we couldn't move water anywhere at all, we let it sit for two hours and those valves probably just got stuck in their guides, got hung up until we could beat them around and get some oil on them again and then they started moving. Uh, thankfully this is hydraulic lifters so we didn't bend any push rods so that's nice and I don't think we hurt any valves because eventually it, it smoothed out and started running right again. So the question today, will that happen again or is it going to fire off normal? Let's see. That could also be attributed to the old gas which is fresh gas but like I said earlier just turned to crap immediately by the amount of stuff that was in the tank. I've seen old gas get on valves before and gum them up to where something happens and they stick in the guides, then it bends push rods. Uh, Dylan McCool had a car that did that on three cylinders within like, you know, an hour of running. He'd fix one, it'd bend another. He'd fix that one, it'd bend another. And then it bent the third, and he's like, that's it, I'm done. And that's what happened to that old wagon that he had. What was that noise? There's a lot of blue smoke out of the carburetor. It sounded like something's like smacking up here. Oh, it's probably the choke. You know what? I have this wire here. I can start it from right here. Yeah, you can hear a valve in there that's not happy. It sounds like we have no compression. Nice. Oh boy. We might have stuck all the valves last night. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. It could just be the fact too that the oil filter's not full since it sits sideways and I can't fill it very far and we need to build oil pressure to pump up the lifters. So keep cranking on it. Here we go. There's definitely, definitely some unhappy valves in there. Oh boy. Come on girl. Come to life. I think this motor was very healthy to start with, but it's definitely no healthier now. We're not done though. We'll keep trying to breathe life into this. Okay, new battery. See if she cranks a little faster. That one was probably pretty worn down from all the electrical testing I've been doing. Very much on fire right now. Fire balls. We're definitely hanging one of the intake valves open. Wow, this is angry. I ain't giving up on you yet. If we have to do invasive heart surgery, so be it. I'll pull a valve cover. So dead. Oh! 
Well, that might be part of it. <laughs> this is probably why we've had such bad luck cranking. Let's fix this. Okay, come on, one working cylinder. You can do it. I know it's definitely got some valve issues right now, but it cleared up the first time. I'm sure it'll clear up again. I'm sure this won't be a recurring thing we have to do every time we start the truck. It's fine, let's do it. Camper. Whoops. Don't worry, we will clean this. I've never had something bite me so hard to come to life. cylinder it is. But you can see it puffing gas back out the intake. Oh. pounds of oil pressure. If that valve isn't freeing up by now, uh, we're gonna have to go in and actually manually free it up. Damn you. I have never seen anything fight to life like that before. We're either gonna have to do something about this fuel or about these valves or something because there's no way that we'll ever be able to drive this motor as it is. Let's let this sit for a couple minutes. Put the oil in the heat soak. See if that'll free that valve up. And if it doesn't work then, we'll pull the valve cover and see what we can do. Then we're going in. Yeah. We're that, coming for you. That gas looks disgusting. So I, I don't I don't know what to do about that. I don't have we don't have a bucket. We don't have an extra gas can. We don't have a way to pump it out. Best thing I could do is change the tank. Or maybe, maybe switch to the auxiliary tank. I don't even know if that's it's not a very Yeah, I don't know if that's even any cleaner. The germ is saving the day again. 
Again, not sponsored, it's just amazing. Move, this is going to be the cleanest spot on the camper. It's going to be too obvious. I know. It's going to be bad. Someone's paying $90 a month to store this here. This thing is destroyed. All right, it's been a couple minutes. Let's see if our valves are happier or even more angry. I don't know. <laughs> under this side which is thankfully the side that's easier to get to but either way we're gonna have to do valve cover gaskets now all right here we go Gotta minimize the amount of mouse poop that falls into the engine well that'll do it right there oh you know what we did this is an exact repeat of Ike's Mustang when I was visiting cars and cameras down in North Carolina these are push-in stud heads, and when the valve sticks, the starter can still turn it over, and it uses this leverage right here to go yeet and pull the studs out of the head. So it looks like this one and this one, the studs both got pulled out of the heads. That should be a fairly straightforward fix if our valves are still willing to move. We'll go ahead and hammer those studs back in, reset her lash, and see if she runs better then. So I've got these valve studs back into the height they're supposed to be and my lash is properly set on both of them. Uh, as you can see, the studs didn't like that very much. This one's a little bendy, so he's seen better days. While I was driving those back in, I noticed something, and Thunderhead289 actually happened to shoot me a phone call, and I talked to him about it, and he agrees. What I noticed was that these are both intake valves, and because of that, they are both exposed to the fuel we are running. Now, I've heard of this happen before. I've never had it happen to myself, uh, Dylan McCool had a blue Oldsmobile Delta wagon that did it. It was running old fuel and it kept sticking intake valves and bending push rods. Thankfully, it just pulled the studs out of our head. We didn't wreck any push rods. We can just tighten everything back down and we're good to go. But Luke and I both think that this was literally caused by bad fuel getting on the valve stems and sticking in the guides. I'm not sure what happens inside the engine. They probably turned the tar to gum up the valve guides. I don't know. But we're 98% sure that bad fuel is exactly the reason we kept sticking valves. So I guess there's something to be learned here today. If your fuel looks like store-bought apple cider, do not run it. Even if it's fresh fuel, don't run it. It's going to ruin stuff. To alleviate that, Mook is going to Walmart right now to get a 6-gallon marine fuel tank. We're going to replumb our fuel system, flush out all the old shit, plug it back into the carb, see if it runs better, and see if we keep sticking valves. And then we can finally possibly hit the trails. All right, before we put the valve cover on, we're gonna spin this motor over and make sure everything moves okay. I'm mostly concerned about this guy since he was stucco before. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> Watch how slow this valve returns. Yeah, that's no good. You can also hear it when you're turning it over. It goes, it goes, weep, up, 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 weep, up, 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 weep. That different noise as it rotates is a faster rotation as it speeds up quickly because there's no resistance on that cylinder because this valve is wide open. So I'm gonna have to oil this guy with a bunch of PB and see if we can get him freed up. Okay, after some time with a can of PB. <laughs> It's better, it's still not perfect, and we're still missing a cylinder somewhere, and I'm not entirely sure if it's that cylinder now. I'm gonna go ahead and put that cover back on, and then start getting ready to set up our fuel system as soon as Mook is back. Okay, our valve cover's back on. I'm going to put some PB blaster in the intake. And now that that's done, I have disconnected the fuel line from the carburetor, so we will not be filling this full of poop gas anymore. We actually need to run this dry. Uh, but I'm going to run it mainly on brake clean because I've noticed nothing cleans up this tar gas quite like brake clean. So why not lube all the valves with some PV blaster and then potentially clean out the intake with brake clean and run it on brake clean. I don't know. Maybe this won't work at all. Maybe it'll work great. We'll see. Let's try it. <laughs> Definitely still 
down and still in there, but we'll see if that clears up. I think we pull the stud on this side as well. I hear some ticking under this valve cover and no amount of PB blaster or brake clean down the intake is going to fix the stud being pulled out of the head. So I gotta pull that valve cover after all. Oh my God. How did that ever, ever flow water through the heater core? That thing is junk. Ah, there it is. Sure enough, we got a stud pulled. A couple of them actually, damn. All right, let me guess. Boop, boop, yep. Two intake valves closest to the carburetor. This is absolutely caused by bad fuel. I'm gonna go ahead and run these down the same way I did the others, set the preload, get the valve cover back on, and then we are going to be good to go. Also, these heads are stamped 302, so it is definitively a 302 with a 289 intake. Don't do this at home, kids, but if for whatever reason you find yourself needing to do it at home, I think this is the best way. This is what I've been doing. Take something like an extension that clears the threads of the stud but sits on the top of the nut and a uh, brass hammer and gently massage that back into the head. You don't want to go too far because then you're going to have a bad time. Get your straight edge. Deal when he's about the same height as his friends nearby. It will have to collapse the hydraulic lifter, so it's gonna get tight and then loosen and tighten and loosen. After it loosens, you can continue downwards. Take this time to massage your valve too. Get them moving. Oil up his stem. Keep that up until he's nice and bouncy like all the other valves. Or at least as close as you can get it. Alright, this guy's done. I'm going to rinse and repeat on this guy, which is now tight because I am on the lobe of the cam. So another thing I didn't mention before when you do this, make sure you turn the engine over until this valve starts to compress. And then you know this is on the base of the camshaft. That's just basic valve train stuff. In the event that you do hammer a stud in too far, worry not, there's a solution. Find yourself a socket or more ideally a stack of washers, which I don't have. Put it on the stud and run the nut down on top of it. Now take your ratchet and tighten that slowly and it will pull that stud back out of the head until you are at the perfect height. A little farther to go. Okay, we're good to go. My push rod slipped, so I'll pull that guy back up to where he needs to be. And then we can go ahead and put this rocker back on and fire this sucker up. Oh, oh, hey. Why are you how are you even falling in there? Oh, please don't tell me you're bent. Do not fall into the intake valley, for the love of God. Okay. <laughs> Thought we were gonna be putting my four barrel intake on for oh, Jesus. I don't know if I brought a big enough hammer for this one. Damn. No one in this town is going to have push rods for sale. Like, no one. Time to get the hammer out, I guess. This could only end well. Do I heat this up first, or do I just go for it? What would heating a push rod do? Would it become softer then? Too brittle, perhaps? Let's just go for it, and then we'll heat it up later. Are these hardened? <laughs> this might be hardened. This might actually work. This is terrifying. Thank God someone welded this push rod straightener up front.
Ta-da! Okay, um, yeah, that's definitely not just gonna fold in half right away. Let's put it back. Maybe we put on an exhaust valve though, since those aren't sticky, this will have a better chance of survival. All right, we got our straightened push rod. We're gonna swap him with the exhaust push rod on the same cylinder because the exhausts have not been sticking and they've moved very freely in comparison to the pooped up um, intake valves. So yeah, we'll see how that works. I have no idea. Whee. He's fine, he's fine. He's fine. All righty, the roof has returned with all the stuff we need to hopefully finish this sucker up. We've got six gallons of gas and enough two-stroke oil to hopefully make six gallons of 50 to one. I saw my buddy Mike from Classic Mustangs 429 do this once, and I thought this was a brilliant idea and it's something we should probably be doing for just about every revival, and I've just literally forgot to do it every single time for like 30 cars since then. Since two-stroke gas is obviously full of oil, it will help lubricate the top of our engine and hopefully get those valves back to moving the way they're supposed to. Uh, we're gonna go 50 to one. Should be enough to make a nice little bit of smoke out the exhaust, but not foul any plugs. Yeah, this is shitty. All right, it should be mixed. I don't see any leaks. Let's go set up our fuel system to make this be the tank that the truck runs on. No more poop. One step closer to margaritas. All right, our new fuel tank is installed and set up. We have the mechanical pump running into this milk jug so that you can see what the uh, gas coming out of it looks like. This is fresh gas. That's going to be fuel tank gas. Now, of course, when the new fuel gets to this point, it's also going to be poop looking because it's dark blue because it's two stroke. All right, I filled our bowls so we can sit here and idle and move fuel. And flush that all out. good or something. There should be way more moving out of that. Hmm. Interesting. I have a vent open. There's no kinks in the line. Maybe the filter's just like that plugged already. Could be. It's not already scorching hot under here, so I think our cooling system's doing its job. I'm sure we need to add some by now. No, nope, it's full. Okay. Don't know how that works. one unhappy cylinder.
you have a needle that bounces like that, that indicates valve issues. So, Instead of you know leading the brakes and replacing components, we're just gonna, just gonna top them off. <laughs> Color good. There we go. I don't think they're operating correctly because I only have like maybe an inch of pedal travel. It's like eh, 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 that's full brakes. So if I had to guess, these rubber lines are swollen and they're not letting fluid pass or something terrible. But good enough for now for what we're doing. This thing is still not running the best. I don't know if we're going to be able to take it out in the desert. Not like this, but we'll do something. Oh, are you kidding me? Look at it. Oh, my God. It just cracked the thermostat housing in half when I went to tighten that bolt a little bit. Damn it. <laughs> this thing does not want to drive. I didn't think it was overheating, but now I've got different opinions. I don't know how accurate that dash gauge is. This engine's not happy. The cooling system's not happy. The valve trains are not happy. The expansion tank's not completely full of rust poop. The carburetor's not happy. There's no way we can reliably take this off-roading in the like on real desert trails. The worst part about being out in the trails in the middle of nowhere is there's no parts or anything if you break down. We even need to like drive somewhere there's a bunch of parts around us. Hey, isn't there like an old junkyard in Phoenix that had a TV show a long time ago? I think so. Hmm. Okay, you guys know us. We are people who do not easily admit defeat. We will fight through anything and give you guys the best episode we possibly can. We really, really wanted to end this episode on a high note with us driving out in the desert. And the truck's just not reliable enough to do that and we are out of time. So we thought, okay, we gotta do something, right? Well, we drove all the way down to Casa Grande and we were going to go drive around in Desert Valley Auto Parts out in their yard. They were gonna let us cruise through the cars, get some awesome desert footage, uh, find some parts out there if we needed them and make a cool ending to the video. But the Bronco will not let it happen. Yeah, that ticking noise is either another bent push rod, the same bent push rod, or most likely we pulled another valve stud out of the head. So, with that, you win, Bronco. You don't have to go drive in the desert one last time. I have never seen such a stubborn car. And a, and a Windsor, a 302 Windsor at that, like our favorite engine. So with that, we're going to end this episode. Thank you guys very much for tuning in for the 73 Bronco Revival. This truck will absolutely return, we promise. If you guys like the video, make sure you like, leave a comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to my friends, Junkyard Mook, Thunderhead 289, Dill McCool, Classic Bus Things 429, The Boss Garage of Ice Cream Garage, Cars and Cameras, the whole gang. Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you guys next week right here on Junkyard Digs. Peace. Bye. All right, Mook, let's drive 23 hours home through another snowstorm, I suppose, potentially. Like three? Yeah. See you guys Bye. probably never. <laughs> We're gonna die. Goodbye.
Hey, Boop. How does it make you feel to know from this spot we are exactly 1,500 miles from home? Very tired. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah.